Hi everybody, it's Emily from ARG Schooling and I am excited today because I'm announcing the new updated science in Build Your Library Grade 6. As you know, I've been updating the science in the middle grade levels of Build Your Library to reflect a more secular science. And I've already released grade five, which I'll link below. And today I wanna to share with you what I've done with grade six. I used Real Science Odyssey Astronomy, the middle grade level, for the beginning of the year. It only runs, it's about 12 lessons. I was only able to stretch that to about 15 weeks. So for the first almost half of the year, you're gonna be studying astronomy. And the living books that I've chosen to supplement that are George and the Big Bang by Lucy and Stephen Hawking. This is just a really fun, interesting story about the age of the Earth. When did the Big Bang happen and how do we know? And there's information about the Large Hadron Collider and space travel and galaxies. And it's just a lot of fun. And you learn a lot along the way. And then I have the book, A Black Hole is Not a Hole. And this is by Carolyn Sinami de Cristofano. This is a nonfiction living book all about black holes and what they are and how they work and what happens if you get too close to one. And it's just really interesting. And I think it's a really great read. Then I have The Mighty Mars Rovers, The Incredible Adventures of Spirit and Opportunity. This is by Elizabeth Rush. And it's exactly what it says it is. This is a fully illustrated, so is the last book also, with photographs about the Mars rovers and how they work and how they were built and all about what they've learned from Mars based on these rovers and it's just really interesting to read about. I love the Science in the Field series. The final book for astronomy that you'll be reading is Team Moon. 400,000 people landed Apollo 11 on the moon and this is by Catherine Thimish. And I love this book. I remember we borrowed this in the library a couple of years ago when we were having an astronomy unit and my kids really enjoyed reading about how it wasn't just these three guys in a space shuttle and going to the moon. It was a lot more to it than that. And I think often when you think about the moon landing, you think about the astronauts. But there is so much going on at NASA to get those astronauts on the moon. So I thought this book was fascinating to see all the different types of jobs and things that go into that. So this is an awesome resource. Because I wanted this to be more of an earth science year rather than just astronomy, after that, you're going to be using the book Weather to do, complete a weather unit. And this covers about six weeks worth of science, and you'll be studying all about weather. I love this book, Weather, by Rebecca Rupp. It is a fantastic book. I've used this off and on throughout our homeschooling years, and I just think it's an awesome book. And there's a, a lot of information as well as activities, and so I've built a unit around it where you're reading and discussing information from the book. You're going to be working on a weather journal where at the end of the six week period, after tracking the weather each day, you're gonna put all of that information into a graph. So a lot of great stuff in here. And then for the last part of the year, we're gonna be using Blair Lee's Science of Climate Change to focus on a unit on climate change because I think that's an important topic and it's not to be missed. And the books that I've chosen to round that out are World Without Fish by Mark Kurlansky. This is an awesome book. I was not expecting to be as engrossed as I was when I read this book. It, it's about fish. It's about what is happening to the oceans and the history of overfishing and the fishing industry and what we can do to save the oceans because it's not just climate change. That's a huge factor. This book covers a lot of information, not just about what's happening to the ocean, but also like what we can do about it, which I think is a big part of that because it's so, it can be intimidating to read about all these bad things happening and not knowing what your place in that is. Like, what do we do? So I like that he gives some realistic things we can actually do about this problem. And finally, I wanted to use this book, Tracking Trash, Flotsam, Jetsam, and the Science of Ocean Motion. Again, not specifically related to climate change, but I thought it, this is a fascinating, again, scientists in the field, I love the series. I thought this was a fascinating look at how we can actually use some of those problems, which in, in this case is junk just floating in the ocean, but how we can use it to learn more about the ocean and how currents work. 
So this book takes a look at how these scientists took advantage of a problem and used it to track ocean currents and learn. So I thought that was kind of fascinating and it does kind of go along with the problems of climate change being one being pollution is a huge issue. And for the final couple weeks of the year, last year I ended up with a few empty weeks so I wanted to do something with that and I came up with this idea to do a literary biology reading project and this year we're going to do a literary earth science project but the books that I came up with for this project, I because I give you a list of books, you don't have to read all of them, you just choose one from the list, whichever one appeals the most to you. So I don't have the actual copy of it, but other book in this series, George's Secret Key to the Universe, would be one of the choices. Out of the Dust, which is by Karen Hess, and that covers extreme weather, This, in this case being the drought that caused the Dust Bowl. The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind by, by William Comquamba. And this book covers wind energy. And, and the final book I chose is The Thing About Jellyfish by Ali Benjamin. And this, this one's a borderline, <laughs> but there is some science in it because it's about a girl studying jellyfish to find out if that's what caused the death of her friend. And it, this is a more coming of age story. And it's beautiful. But this book is a lot to do with jellyfish. And honestly, the reason I chose it is because when you read world without fish there's quite a bit there's a bit of information about jellyfish and how when you start eliminating species of fish in the ocean you end up with a lot of jellyfish which is like the cockroach of the sea is I think the way he put it and so when I saw this book I kept thinking this kind of ties in with world without fish a little bit so, so that is what I have chosen to do with the science in grade six I'm excited about it I hope you guys are excited about it and I'm I'm just I'm happy to get this out there to everybody and now I've got to work on grade seven. I have no idea what I'm going to do with that yet. I'm still figuring that one out. So that might take a little longer, but it will get done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you are excited for the updates. And I will see you guys in my next video. Happy reading. Bye.